Homage to the lineage gurus. Homage to the venerable Mang Liao Ming. Homage to Master Sakya Zheng Kong. Homage to His Holiness the Sixteenth Kamapa. And homage to Master Dupton Darshi. Homage to the three jewels of the altar. Homage to the main deity of Homa today, the High King Aulagiteswara Bodhisattva. Sumo Tanzan Katso Tutan City. All Dharma masters, Dharma educators, Dharma teachers, Dharma instructors, Dharma tutors, temple directors, and all disciples present here and over the internet. Good afternoon, how do you do? I still Shanae Ora Miko Kekero Mucho Scoin Ijiva Kimoji Jimmy Yapi Pretty Pretty Uh, I would like to announce for next Sunday, June 18th at 3 p.m., there would be Padma Kumara Homa. In the past, nobody seemed to know about Padma Kumara. But actually, he's an animated uh, child or youth, and also called auspicious light child, and also called lotus born child. So, this lotus-born child existed since Tang Dynasty. The earliest ones were Bao Yi youth and Bao Sang youth. Uh, including Guru Padmasambhava is also Lotus Youth or Padma Kumara. So Bao Yi or Ratnamati and Bao Sang Youth Padna Samkata. That's uh, the ceremony next week, next Sunday. This time we perform hiking our look at this Homa. I noticed that many disciples are wearing white. Only I wear red. Actually, any color works for hiking our look at this In the past, 
the person who compiled the Buddhist dictionary. And he wrote about hiking. I will look at this one. It's not because he's very tall or high. Uh, high means uh, unexcelled, unparalleled. There is nothing higher than this. And king, of course, is first and foremost. In a country, the king would be the highest. So the unexcelled first and foremost, I will look at this one. That's the commentary made by Ding Fu Bao. So this, our look at this water is the precious and excelled and first and foremost, our look at this water. And hiking, I will look at this Vara Sutra, is his sutra. The first time I noticed the statue of hiking, I will look at this Vara, was at the in San Yi, Taiwan, which has many uh, sculpture shops or sculptors sculpting uh, Buddhist statues and other things. Uh, I was with the four great ladies uh, visiting that uh, street walking around there, and one of them had the uh, Avalokiteswara that was hiking Avalokiteswara. And the statue that was sculpted was red. So the red hiking I will look at this water. Yesterday, I was going to wear white, but I thought of the statue of hiking, I will look at this water, that I encountered, first encountered, so I especially wore red today. And then, on the tanka there, the hiking, I will look at this water, it's red. And white paper. And the celestial garment that she wears also red. Oh. And the tanka is a red background and white uh, characters of the sutra. So we wear red, but any color is fine. White for purification, for magnetization, love or harmony and respect is red. And for money, it's for enrichment, that would be yellow. And for subjugation, that would be blue or black. Hiking, I'll look at this way, put this up. Is, of course, Whatever color that you, whatever homa that you want to perform is fine. 
and then you use the cor corresponding color. And what's special? The mantra inside the Haikyu Sutra. And in here, there are the seven Buddhas. So the crown that uh, he wears is the seven Buddha crown. This is very special. As for myself, every day I would chant the hiking. I'll look at the Swara Sutra because the first sutra that I encountered is the hiking. I'll look at the Swara Sutra. And the one that I memorized was the first one was hiking out of the Swara Sutra. And the one that can generate spiritual response was also hiking out of the Swara Bodhisattva. And in the past, I often ask people to print the hiking out of the Swara Sutra. And I have written that Tripura School highly revere hiking Alokiteswara Sutra. Because I have a strong belief that it can eradicate the suffering of life and death and eradicate all kinds of suffering and harms. Whether I'm driving or someone else is driving, driving me, I would always chant the hiking Avalokiteshvara Sutra in the car. When I went to Shikoku in Japan, the 88 temples, I also saw the Japanese version of hiking Avalokiteshvara Sutra. That was at the 88 spiritual centers or temples at one of them. We saw the hiking Alokiteswara Sutra. So that showed that the sutra was, can also be found in Japan. So it had spread for... So Buddhism spread from India. And then directly to Southeast Asia, to Tibet, and to China, to Korea, and Japan. Back then, there was also hiking Alokiteshvara Sutra in Japan. Once I talk about the great white high country, and that's the same as Sisha Kingdom or the Tenga Kingdom. The great white high country. <laughs> <clears throat> All the people there can chant and memorize the hiking Avalokiteshvara Sutra. 
。这本经典很好，这这个经典，它本身很短。The sutra is wonderful. It's very short, and in it there are all the epithets or names of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. We can say that it includes all the Buddhas, and all the Bodhisattvas are included. Okay, let's tell a joke. A dead discovered that inside the wallet of his daughter there's a condom. So the dad asks, "How come there's condom in your bag?" And the daughter replied, "Oh, don't get mad. No, it's not what you think." Mm, according to the definition. Uh, placing a condom inside the bag seems unimaginable because people don't think of them together. But for fortune teller, the condom Oh, the condom is to put uh, the semen, semen. So this is play of word of Chinese, and the semen in Chinese sounds like gold. So this is to attract gold. Uh, yeah, it's a play of word of Chinese. The boat is about to sink, and the captain asked loudly, shouted, "Who can pray?" And Xiaoming raised his hand and said, uh, "I can." And the captain told him. Why don't you pray for yourself? And the captain said, and the rest is just wear the lifesaver because uh, we, we uh, lack one. The mom is very strict, so dad cannot leave the house at night, and Xiaoming also is disallowed to leave the house. So Xiaoming intentionally made the dad angry, and then the dad chased after me, get out, get out of the house. And then Xiaoming went to the internet cafe, and the dad went to the bar. Because the dad was following Xiaoming out of the house.
This is the most romantic words I've ever heard. The wife told the husband, I am this fat, so uh, do you love me? And the husband said, when you were slim, you live in my heart, and then you gain weight, and it got stuck. So now you can never get out of it. <laughs> now we'll get to the main subject. Question and answer. A question from Malaysia. How do you pronounce that? Okay. Grandmaster, please. Grandmaster, you teach us and often reminds us to cultivate bodhicitta. May I ask, in cultivating bodhicitta, I'll help someone, but after they overcome the difficulties, they turn around and started to chide me. So the next time they face hardships, should I help them again? In the past, in my helping them, I did not expect anything in return or gratitude, but I felt very hurt and disappointed in their ingratitude and rebukes. But let me tell you, generating bodhicitta, what is bodhicitta? Simply, anuttara samyak sambodhi. Anuttara samyak sambodhi. In simple words, it's called bodhicitta. Air or uh, spiritual commitment. So you generated the mind to cultivate spiritually. That's what it is. But after helping someone, they turn around and insult you. And then in the future, if when they face difficulties, should we help them again? Yes, okay, that's the answer. Yes. And definitely, this is the equanimity of the four immeasurables. Equanimity means equality, giving equally, forsaking equally, doesn't matter what kind of person that is. You want to help them all the same, all the same, you want to give to them. This equanimity is most important. Sentient beings are all equal. There's no differences whether they're good or bad, young or old, man or woman. And not only to humans, but to all sentient beings. Animals, the beings in the animal health, Hungry Goose, Azura, realms, we treat them all equally. So loving kindness, compassion, joy, and equanimity actually is not very easy to achieve. Just for the equanimity alone, not easy. Because humans have this concept of self, ego, 
and having this self, then you have differentiation, discrimination. So, when you have differentiation, it would be difficult to deliver beings equally. Once you have this notion of self, it would be difficult to deliver equally. Doesn't matter whether you're disappointed or not. Toward people that you despise, you still need to give to them. You still need to help and deliver them. That's how it should be after you generate bodhicitta. If even for someone who harms you frequently, you still need to deliver them. How can you? This person is the one who always harms you and a petty, bad, evil people. But you still have to give to them, to help them, to deliver them. That's the special spirit in Buddhism. That's what the Buddha teaches us. Equal economity. The economity of the four immeasurables what is the most difficult to do. Yes, of course. You should help them. That's the answer to Lianhua Jin Yi from Malaysia. Second, a question from Taiwan, Zheng Mingxiu. Homage to the precious Dharma King, Grand Master, I have completed 8 million recitation of Padma Kumara Mantra. Although Grand Master has stated that it guarantees a rebirth in the Pure Land, but I'm still worried that I may have done something wrong that would impede my rebirth in the Pure Land. Grand Master, is there a way to make me feel rest assured so that I have faith to return to the Maha Twin Lotus Pond's home. So she's completed 8 million recitation of Padma Kumara Mantra or Root Guru Mantra. Yet she's still afraid that she have done something wrong and cannot be reborn in the pure land. So she has no peace of mind. I think this thing, since you're afraid that you may have done something wrong, then don't do anything wrong then. <laughs> then you have peace of mind then don't make a mistake and don't if you have a, if you've done some wrong something wrong then you repent and chant the hundred syllable mantra and you pray and repent in front of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. In Buddhism, the most important thing is a repentance and to change, to change your past mistakes. It is unavoidable for a human being to make mistakes. Everyone can make mistakes. Even your guru sometimes make a mistake. A master can make a mistake. And monks and nuns too make mistakes. Let alone the ordinary uh, lay practitioners. It's no big deal to 
make a mistake or do something wrong, as long as you realize and then you need to depend to the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas and then correct and change them and never to repeat the same mistake, then that would be fine. Actually, the wrongdoings or misdeeds that's unintentional can be forgiven. It's, if you do them with intent, then there would be real misdeeds or wrongdoings. But if they're unintentional, it can be forgiven. So, the mind it's very hard to talk about. Eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind. And the root of the mind, the sixth consciousness, this will be talked about in the Vimalakiti Sutra. From the sixth uh, consciousness, uh, uh, to pacify, then you can also attain, have attainment from the sixth consciousness. So, you can uh, repent. Oops. Then you would uh, be rest assured to return to the Maha Twin Lotus Ponds. Ah, uh, let me repeat it again. Uh, benevolent ones abhor, abhor, the, abhor it or the physical body and instead rejoices in the Buddha's body. Why is this so? Because the Buddha's body is the Dharma body, which arises from immeasurable merits and wisdom. It rises from the observance of precepts, meditative stability, wisdom, liberation, and liberation from knowing and seeing. It arises from loving kindness, compassion, joy, and equanimity. It arises from generosity, ethical conduct, endurance, gentleness, diligence, meditations, smile of liberation, as well as hearing and learning wisdom. Also from skillful means, the six transcendence powers. And the most important one is the transcendent power of uh, complete outflow, which is the complete outflow of afflictions. So without afflictions, then you have self-mastery. When you have six transcendent powers, then you can act spontaneously according to the course of nature. This is a kind of prajna, wisdom, which is paramita, to arrive at the other shore, to attain the ultimate light enlightenment. That's a Buddha. And it also arises from the three clarities. Uh, all lucidities, the clarity of the celestial seeing or sight. And the clarity of exhaustive outflow and the, the most three most important transcendent powers. Uh, the clarity of transcendent seeing is that you know that 
the ultimate truth of the universe and you comprehend the original face. That's called the clarity of the transcendent uh, seeing. And then the clarity of past lives. So you know about your past lives and you also comprehend your present life and you're also clear about your future lives that the three times are one, past, present, and future, refers to the three times. Past, past tense, present tense, future tense, begin, began, begun. <laughs> Uh, three clarities, past, present, and future. Once you know, that's called the clarity of knowing past lives, that the three times are one, and then your afflictions are completely exhausted. That's called the clarity of the complete outflow. No more afflictions. If you can do so, or you reach that, then your Dharma body will appear, which is the body of the Buddha. It rises from the 37 aids to enlightenment, and we have talked about this 37 aids uh, for mindfulness, for right. Uh, exertions for transcendent uh, travels, five roots, five powers, uh, seven realizations, the noble eightfold path, all together, 37. Uh, upon practicing the 37 aids to enlightenment, what will happen? You will attain meditation, meditative stability, and the wisdom of the Tathagata. When meditative stability and the wisdom of the Tathagata are executed uh, together, then you would attain uh, Buddha's body. That arises from 37 aids to enlightenment. It arises from uh, stopping and seeing. What is stopping? That's meditation. And what is seeing? That's wisdom. So, this so according to the great perfection dharma of tantric buddhism the key points are chakke chakke and tokko chakke and tokko what is chakke chakke and tokko so what is chakke that means stopping stop everything or cutting through. So when there's no thought at all, that's uh, stopping or tracture. That's meditation. And seeing, that's toko, which is leaping, direct leaping, direct leap. So seeing actually is observing, so you use the wisdom to observe. So, stopping is meditation, and observing or seeing, that's wisdom. So you use the wisdom of the Tathagata to observe. So it arises from from 
stopping and seeing. It rises from 10 powers, 4 fearlessness, and 18 distinctive cultivations. So this all belong to a Buddha. A Buddha has 10 powers, 4 fearlessness, and 18 uncommon or distinctive dharma. So from so it arises from the Buddha's ten powers, fearlessness, and distinctive cultivations. And it arises from abandoning everything unvirtuous and accumulating all virtues. So this is like when we deliver sentient beings, that's good or virtuous like uh, charitable acts or giving, ethical conduct, endurance, diligence, meditation, wisdom, the six parameters are all virtuous dharma. But after you perform this virtuous dharma, you don't think that these are all my merit. Then naturally, you would generate dharma body. And don't think that after you do all these good deeds, this is my merit. If you have such a mindset, then you can only go to the three heavenly realms, and you cannot transcend that. What you need to do is, after doing good deeds, just like what Jesus said, don't let the left hand know know what the right what good deeds the right hand did. So don't be mindful or think about what good deeds you have done. Only then is it the true merit. So it cut off everything bad. That means abiding by the precepts. And you accumulate all good dharma, which is the uh, skillful means uh, to give to sentient beings. So it arises from this. It also arises from truthfulness. What is that? It arises from the original face. Actually, this human body is no good. It's dirty. The body is uh, problematic. There are a lot of sickness, a lot of illness. You wake up in the morning, and all of a sudden, the heart beats. Or you can't sleep at night, and have insomnia. It's not very normal, the body. And sometimes you have troubles, all kinds of things, all kinds of ailments in the body, 84,000 kinds of illnesses that you've never thought of. Uh, they still talk about super virus now. What is super virus? That's the uh, great king virus. <laughs> Hiking virus, and Para, the king of virus, and when they came, when they come, there's nothing you can do about it. So what is truth? 
what is truthful that I've talked and during lunch I also talk about this although your body is bad but to cultivate spiritually you have to rely on your body without this body it's difficult to practice you have to rely on this human life and it is very difficult to be born a human or to get this human life it's very difficult according to the buddhist sutras if you become a duck how can a duck cultivate spiritually it cannot chant a mantra all it can do is quack, quack or you become a crow a crow can chant mantra at least it can say ah 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 of the ah om ah hong at this one ah syllable right so once you fall into the animal realms it's impossible to cultivate spiritually that's why the human life is very rare and this human body although you can sleep it's still there's still original face inside your body when you find your own original face then it arises from truthfulness uh, real phenomena and unreal phenomena the true Buddha face appears so from the truthfulness inside our body to the truthfulness of the original face so it arises from truthfulness it arises from restraint from indulgence a grand master's life is never uh, indulged it's free from indulgence i have no breaks all year round I never say that, okay, I take a break today, unless I'm really, really, even, even if I were hospitalized, I would still chant the Buddha's name or chant the Sutra. So even if I were to be hospitalized, you can continue to cultivate spiritual and chant if you're in the hospital and get the uh, intravenous <laughs> and there's a play of word that intravenous is life a drop of water is life so you still need to cultivate spiritually there even in the hospital so i never have a break even if my i lost my voice i can chant inside my heart you don't necessarily have to uh, to make a sound you can chant it in your heart chant the buddha's name or the sutra so say if the body really bad and had to be hospitalized and all the same your heart and mind are still on the buddhas to maintain the clear light radiance inside the heart mind i asked his holiness the 16 kamapa what is the most important thing in life and his holiness replied maintain the clear light radiance inside your heart mind inside your heart there is that clear light radiance that you need to maintain at all times this is the most important in a human life that was spoken by his holiness the 16 kamapa maintain the clear light radiance inside your heart that's what he said it arises from non-indulgence if you maintain the clear light radiance inside your heart that's 
no non-indulgence. Yes, people are very lazy. Like in my chanting of the hiking out of this Sutra, uh, it would not work if we don't chant. If I don't chant for a day, I would always chant every day. Last night in the practice. We chanted hiking Alokiteshwar Sutra, and I did too. And I chanted inside the car, and also during the group practice. When I heard it, I chanted it. And when I perform the Bhadra deliverance of the thousand Dharma vessels, I also do it every single day. When I had no time at all at night, and it's too late, I still did do it, even when I feel sleepy. <laughs> yes, I was so sleepy, and it just kind of drifted off, but then I detracted it, and I still did it. I go to bed only after I completed all the practices. I would always find time. Tonight, going home would be rather late. So when Master Lian Qi was driving the Mercedes-Benz truck, <laughs> I don't know what you call that, tank, I would uh, practice ever since uh, I get on the car until I get off the car and he drove really fast and my I would I would swing and doesn't matter how fast he drives I still do my practice frankly speaking Master Du Hui drives very stably very stable we will not uh, we will not swing Hmm? But Master Lian Qi, <laughs> our party would be like that. <laughs> Simu one time told me, uh, I feel dizzy uh, having him drive. Uh, that, that is very true. He drives very fast from the rainbow temple to the local is less than uh, 20 minutes. There's no cars around. There's no car around, but he still drives really fast, and we ask, why? And he, he seemed to feel that it's still too slow. What else can we say? We just wait. But the Hui was very stable when he drive, when he drove. But he, but he, uh, but that, a uh, truck. <laughs> Is that called truck? I don't know. Uh, a very uh, heavy vehicle, and it's uh, it's a very strong, so it's okay. And he said there would be something like maybe airbag or something that would protect. But I still sway really badly inside the car. But it doesn't matter how it sway back and forth. I still do my practice from beginning to end. And then, and in, in local, it's a bit slower, so by the time we get home, it's just one session, exactly one session. So, the body of the Tathagata arises from all the above countless pure dharma. So, 
all the dharma that we just talked about, like uh, loving kindness, compassion, joy, equanimity, uh, generosity, the six paramitas, the uh, innumerable merit, uh, the six transcendent powers, the three lucidities, the seven aids to enlightenment, Trakchu and Toko, ten powers for fearlessness, the eighteen distinctive cultivation, and then uh, abandoning all the bad, everything bad, and cultivating everything good. All of this are called the countless pure dharma. So Dharma body and Buddha body came from all those. Uh, that's all for today. A group of friends went singing in the uh, room. And the friends sang songs for many different countries, uh, some Cantonese, Japanese, English, Chinese, Taiwanese. And so he started to sing the Mahakaruna Dharani, Great Compassion Dharani. And after he finished, everyone was very quiet and no one clapped. Was it because it was sung so well? The doctor told the patient, uh, the surgeries, uh, the success rate of the surgery is only 50%. Do you want to have it? The patient said, uh, why don't you do it twice then? Because twice that would make 100%, right? 50% twice. Oh, uh, the, the God under the moon was fired. So the God under the moon was fired uh, by the Jade Emperor, laid off. And the one who took his place was the fortune god. Oh, that's right. These days, these days, if you have no money, no house, no cars, how can you get a wife? Because the god under the moon is for finding spouses. So it's better to ask for the fortune god.